Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am working with DNVGL. Today I am going to talk about a very interesting topic that is related to preventive maintenance. Now, it is in a series of six parts. The first part was maintenance. This is specifically about preventive maintenance. And the coming episodes will be related to predictive maintenance, Internet of Things and how it is impacting the maintenance process, then TPM and then finally what are the challenges in maintenance process and what can be the possible measures. So in this episode, I'm going to talk in detail about preventive maintenance. Somebody has rightly said prevention is better than cure. Something similar we are doing these days from COVID-19 by wearing mask and keeping social distancing. In general, we do yoga, pranayam and meditation so that we can keep our body healthy and mind fit. Many times people use their mobiles with a cover so that it does not get any scratch. Something similar is there with respect to the equipments in any organization wherein the intent is to keep the equipments in healthy condition. In fact, manufacturing process design's key output is the preventive maintenance and to ensure that how the machines can remain healthy. Although it is true that it is not possible to ensure that all the machines will always remain in healthy condition, they are bound to fail. But what is important is that how much impact they are putting up to the organizations and how much loss it is happening uh, and how much action or how much dependency it is with respect to the customer so that organization can take care about that. Then another important aspect is that earlier there was to be a thought process that if it is not failing then don't fix it. Now that concept does not work because whenever a machine fails it results in huge losses. Here it is also very important to understand that what is more important, breakdown or the preventive maintenance. If the breakdown cost is less than preventive maintenance, then what should the organization do? Say for example, if preventive maintenance cost is $1,000 and the breakdown cost is say $500, so what should be the option? Obviously, the first thing that will come to the management mind is, let us have a breakdown because we are saving still $500 when we are doing the preventive maintenance. If we talk about IAT of 16949, clause number 8.5.1.5, preventive maintenance is one of the key requirement that is coming out from there. In preventive maintenance, there are four key steps. The first one is inspection, second is detection, third one is correction, and the fourth one is prevention. When we say inspection, the intent is to regularly see the machine that whether it is in healthy condition or whether it is giving any symptom with respect to the failure. In detection, the intent is to identify the early signals that is coming from the machine so that rather than it is going into a breakdown, we take some action and make the sure that the machine is in healthy condition. The third one is correction, is that whenever an organization or the maintenance process observes that yes, the machine is going to be under breakdown, a signal is coming very strong, so immediately some action can be taken to correct it. And the fourth one is prevention to avoid any failures so that the human safety can be taken care as well as the productivity can be ensured in the organization. Now coming next, that why an organization should do preventive maintenance? There can be different reasons. The first of all, organization may be interested to increase the life of the equipment. Organization may be interested to increase mean time between failure and then two other things like mean time to maintain and mean time to maintenance. Organization want to increase that also. Then moreover, one key objective is to make the repeated breakdowns as zero. That can be another reason why the organization thinks that preventive maintenance should happen. And that brings another question that when preventive maintenance should be done? Again, there can be different aspects. It can be as per the management's philosophy that what they think is right time for doing the preventive maintenance, then it can be time based that well every one month, every three months or every six months it can happen. Many organizations do it in terms of usage also that well after every 1000 hours we will do the preventive maintenance or after every 500 hours we will do it. So that can be another aspect of that. Another aspect could be with respect to criticality of the machine that how important that particular machine is for the organization that in case it goes under breakdown, what can be the impact? That can also be another reason that when the organization should do the preventive maintenance. Then that brings another important question. Who will do the preventive maintenance? Now, in an 
normal machine if you say there are five key systems that works there electrical mechanical electronics hydraulic and pneumatic so it's pertinent to see that whether the person who is going to be put in the maintenance job whether that person is competent to do that job or not so that can be one key criteria with respect to that who will do the preventive maintenance that brings another question how to do preventive maintenance so as i said about the five key things about electrical mechanical pneumatic hydraulic and electronics so a checklist can be made with respect to each of the parameters which will be different from machine to machine that what are the key points that needs to be checked in the machine while doing the preventive maintenance that can be one step then another thing could be that what can be the frequency of doing it there can be certain parameters that needs to be checked every day there is a terminology called clit c l i t cleaning lubrication inspection and tightening then there can be some other parameters which can be weekly or maybe monthly half yearly or yearly also then sop can also be prepared standard operating procedure the intent of standard operating procedure is to guide the person who is doing maintenance that how they have to undertake the entire process so that it should not happen that even we did the preventive maintenance but still it didn't work effectively the way the organization is thinking then a job plan can be prepared the intent of job plan is what are the different steps that a person has to do while doing the preventive maintenance and what are the tangible outputs that organization is thinking to achieve when they want to do that complete the entire process that brings another important aspect why it happens that organizations don't give that much importance to preventive maintenance again there can be a couple of reasons one is the importance the given by top management that how much value they are giving it to the preventive maintenance then some other reasons could be the budget which is allocated by top management then how much importance we are giving between production as well as preventive maintenance at times availability of spare parts also become a reason that why organization does not go for preventive maintenance now lastly i will to talk about what are the key benefits organization can get if they do a systematic preventive maintenance the first thing is with respect to increasing the life of machine once we increase the life of machine the depreciation rate that will reduce with respect to the machine so that's a direct benefit to the organization then mean time between failure will increase mean time to maintain mean time to maintenance will also increase the productivity of the organization will improve overall morale of the people will improve the confidence of the customer as well as the organization will improve with respect to the machines that yes they can trust on their machines the productivity the productability of the machines will also enhance so if we talk about summary i talked about four key things with respect to predictive maintenance that uh, preventive maintenance we can do inspection detection correction and prevention then i talked about why we need to do preventive maintenance then why uh, when we have to do preventive maintenance how to do preventive maintenance and who can do preventive maintenance and then later on i talked about what are the challenges that organization faces for doing preventive maintenance and what are the benefits organization can derive if they do an effective preventive maintenance so this is part 2 of this entire series that series of 6 that i am talking about the next video will be with respect to predictive maintenance so in case you want to understand little bit more about this video you can click the below link and you will get more information about it and if you want to get this videos regularly you can subscribe to my youtube channel thank you